Hello, welcome to another lesson on pivot tables. If you remember back in lesson seven, we looked at the ability to add multiple rows and multiple columns in the same pivot table. I want to show you something else that's cool about pivot tables today. You're not just limited to multiple columns, multiple rows. You can put multiple values in the data area of the pivot table as well. Let me show you what I mean. I played a little bit with uh, what we left off with. I've got our five clinic physicians over here and the five E&M levels of the new patients that they've seen over here. And what I want to do is I want to compare those E&M levels to see, does one of my physicians uh, bill a higher percentage of level five or level one? And it's hard to tell by looking at these raw numbers alone, because if you look at Dr. Cezanne, it looks like he's low, but then, well, he's the lowest of the five physicians as well. Here's the way to do it. If you click inside the pivot table to get back to our pivot table field list, you'll see down here I'm counting patients. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the patient field down here again. And sure enough, I'll move this out of the way so you can see, I'm counting patients, 59, 59, 107, 107. I've just replicated what I had there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to do value field settings. And I'm going to look at show fields as. And instead of doing it normal, I want to show I'll show you a few of these options. You can do the percentage of the row, percentage of the column, percentage of the total, percentage of the overall. And what we're going to look at is percentage of row because what I want to know is as I go across and look at each physician, I want to know what percentage of each of their codes fall within level one, level two, level three, level four, and level five. So I click percent of row. And then what I'm going to do here is instead of doing count of patient two, I'm going to click percent and the number format is automatically uh, knows that it's going to be a percent and I'm going to knock it down one decimal point, click OK, click OK, and now what I have is 11 percent, 19 percent, 41 percent, and if I scroll over you'll be able to see the total at the end of each is 100 percent. And if you find, hey, that's a little bit hard to read, what you can always do is drag the count back out of the table and now I'm only looking at percentages. So now I can see, hey, you know, Dr. Renoir, well he's highest at the level ones, and but you know he's also highest at the level five, pretty comparable to Dr. Degas. Now a lot of this has to do with the fact that I randomized the data to do the sample table. But what you can quickly and easily see if you had real data was trends to say, hey, here's level one versus level two. Uh, it's easy if we come up and filter and say Overall, did the trends change in 2008? Well, there's only 2008. And if you drag, let's, let's do all, and drag year down here. We can bring year over. And then we can see 2007. Here was the breakdown. 2008, there was the breakdown. You may say, well, that's a little bit hard to see. Remember from lesson seven, you can do this. And now, if we move this out of the way, and what I'm going to do is shrink these down a little bit so they're easier to see. Maybe column width six too small. No, that works other than this 100% at the end. So move that out of the way. And so you can easily see in 2007, 2008, 2009, 4.1, 2.8, 4.1, level threes, 13, 14, 13, 12, 13, 14. You can see trends going up. It's very easy to look at multiple fields, multiple value fields in the same, let's pull patient back down so we can count them again, in the same pivot table. Another thing I hope you find helpful is you start working with pivot tables. Stay tuned next time I've created some new data. We'll start with a new data set and learn more about pivot tables. Thanks for watching.